Yo, right, guys, welcome back to another video. And in this week's video, we're almost doing a cheap versus steep type video. Basically, what I've got here is our trusty little eBay special. We brought this for probably about £10, something like that. Really cheap OBD2 Bluetooth dongle. Plugs into your OBD2 port, and you can connect to it through various apps on your phone. Bish, bash, bosh. I thought the job was done. And this is what we used, as you can see from our box. It's a bit torn and a bit shabby around the corners let's say this has had tons of use over its time so yeah good purchase has been had with that but then obviously we've since upgraded to this which is the autel ap200 and one of the things that i see on the internet quite a lot is people doing fault scans on their cars it don't have to be a freelander too it can be any car and often not coming up with much or any fault codes as such and I think a lot of that has to do with the type of dongle you're using. I'm going to try and demonstrate that by doing a fault scan with Cheapy Cheap Cheap using Talk Pro and then doing the same fault scan again on the same car at pretty much the same time, well, after this one, obviously, with the AP200. Does this pick up as many faults as what this one does? Let's find out, shall we? We've got the Cheapy Cheap Cheap, as I'm calling it, OBD2 dongle plugged in the ignitions turn on in the car then hopefully over to the side of me if i've left enough room you should see my phone display with torque pro loaded up we're going to do a basic little fault scan so as you can see fault codes so i'm going to click on that and then i'm going to click on the three little dots and then refresh let's see what fault codes this picks up already we've got two so what i'm going to do is speed this little bit up so you don't get too bored fault scan complete and as you can see from the phone screen there is two fault codes logged on the ecu uh throttle pedal position sensor thingy maduda and another one along the same sort of lines so as far as this dongle is concerned there's everything else on the car is fine we've just got two issues and i can click on them and it just brings up that little bit of description and nothing more if you had just this dongle that's all that you'd know that there's two errors on the car how true they are i'm not sure as you will have seen from our last video when we got recovered in this car i know that was quite a while ago but i've not cleared the ecu since then it's got started and stopped quite a lot these could be phantom codes on the ecu so what i'm going to do now is do the same sort of thing plug in the auto do a fault scan and see if that shows just two faults let's see what happens we are back, but this time with the Autel AP200 plugged in. And let me just drop that, as you'll see to the side there. You should hopefully be able to see my phone screen. Anyway, we're into the main app. I'm not going to bore you with going through all the separate submenus. So we'll go diagnostics or diagnosis or whatever I like to call it that's normally incorrect. Auto scan, and then we're going to let it scan away. So not to bore you too much, once again, we're going to speed this bit up. There we have it, scan complete again, but this time on the Autel AP200. And I apologize if you hear any popping or clicking from the speakers. One of the things you can tell that when this does a scan, it does a much deeper scan because the infotainment system and radio switches on and off several times. Anyway, on to what is discovered. And straight away, you can tell from the scan that it's found more fault codes than what this has so this said that there was only two fault codes the autel ap200 has given us a very different story starting off with the top the power control uh, control module click on that press ok let's just see what that's got in it read codes there we have it the two that we had on this are obviously on the ap200 so yay for this you could say it's found the codes but then on top of this if i click the snowflake it also gives me a lot of information how true the information is i'd like to think it's there or thereabouts i think it's telling us when we read the code not when the co code was logged but it tells you the distance at which the code was 
triggered let's say the voltage of the engine how warm it was outside the power mode as you can see on the screen it gives you ample and ample amounts of information to help you troubleshoot what the issue is is it a temperature related thing is it a i don't know a revs thing if it's something to do with the engine is it a certain volume of air going through the engine you know that sort of thing so obviously there's them two i'm going to guess that this is going to be much the same sort of information let's go back from there go out of there and then go to the abs click on that okay let this load up we'll read the codes as you can see there's another code co code if i can get my words out correctly here it's an intermittent one this wasn't picked up by the cheap code scanner lost communication with the steering angle sensor module and you can click the snowflake again and it gives you a handful of information all in there like i say how true these codes are i'm not sure they could be some phantom codes in here from where the car's been start stopped quite a lot body control module let's go into that apparently there's six in there so already we're way up on what the cheapy cheap cheap thing said that we had read codes rain sensor issue ptc heater but it's got some other ones in here i do think that some of these are a bit phantom codish so i wouldn't look too much into it it's one of the things that if you found these give them a clear go take your car for a drive for a week or two weeks or so and then see which ones pop back up that's the best way to go about things so yeah more in there infotainment system another one in there we'll click that okay apologies if this bit's a bit boring but we're just going to quickly sweep through the codes random code there that i guess you could google if you want i think i've googled this and this is something and nothing but it's a code and i think a lot of people can't actually work out how to fix this code it's one that many cars uh, many freeland twos end up having on them so go back out of there and then front control display interface module we'll go okay on there obviously this is not a perfect freelander 2 but not by any means we do what we can and as you can hear there's popping and clicking where we're interrupting the signal to the infotainment unit and then another code code in there as you can see so what is the outcome of all of this well the outcome is do you know what this is good if you have a light up on your dash potentially this will read it and give you some information to get you started so if you if you don't have some form of obd2 kind of scanner then a cheapy cheap thing will get you by but reality is get something decent like the autel ap200 this is not too advanced it's nothing too technical it's a bit cumbersome to set up hence why i did a video that i put on our channel about it because it's probably not as easy as it could be to set up but once you've got it set up not only does it read codes but it's got a load of functions as you can probably see at the bottom that it can reset airbag lights dp it can do dpf regens if you've got a dpf reset service lights and yeah all manner of different bits and pieces some are compatible with the freelander 2 some may not be compatible with the freelander 2 but i would definitely advise getting something like this because it will dive a lot deeper into your car and drag out all the codes that might be permanent codes might be intermittent might be historic it will also give you loads of information about it this isn't a sponsored video i've got no affiliation with autel i wish i did i wish i was getting a kickback from this this is just information to put out there because i know a lot of people they end up buying these cheapy cheap ones which are, are are good they serve the purpose but they don't tell the full story half the time enough of my rambling hope this video has been at least a tiny bit informative if it has stick a like down on this video that would be much appreciated also go and check out our new facebook page that we've got scott and alana 4x4 very aptly named we've also got an instagram page which alana does a cracking job of um, go and check that out follow us on both of them if you can or one or the other we don't mind we're not fussy but if nothing else if you like our videos please subscribe to the channel help us get to 10,000 subscribers that's what we're aiming for let's see if we can get that done anyway thank you very much for watching this video much appreciated and i'll catch you in the next video seeing as Lana's not here to spot the camera i'm gonna have to do it so thank you and goodbye goodbye everyone and oh Double home wave and splat.